I've never done this like that. Like, <laughs> but I, I would say, you know, we talk about Lou Elizondo, and we're talking about Richard Dolan, and we're talking about all these people that are coming forward, like Jason Sands. Let's talk about the man who's coming forward with what's called actual documents and facts and videos and analysis and whistleblowers. I'm not some government agent telling you stories by that I heard at the campfire when I was in the Army or the Air Force. I am brought forward the documents. I throw it in people's faces. I fought the government. I went up against Hollywood. I went up against the UFO community. And I am standing here five years later victorious that I think that I have proven the greatest cover up in the biggest secret in human history. And I didn't do it with stories. I did it with human intelligence. I did it with documents. I did it with guts and courageousness. And I'm standing here to tell you the truth that the government has had and knows all there is to know about extraterrestrials and life elsewhere. Beyond the Forbidden. Become a member on Patreon to get full access to all exclusive content. A few of the perks is the full-length ad-free video version of the interviews, face-to-face -face interviews, bonus shows, and behind-the-scenes footage. You will also receive the video interview way in advance before the audio-only interview gets dropped on all platforms. Sign up and become a member today for only three bucks a month. The link is in the description. I'm 57 years old. I'm a retired, uh, semi-retired uh, automobile dealer. I grew up uh, in the far northwest side of Chicago. I was a high school, college, semi-pro football player, uh, pretty accomplished. I went to Memphis State, now the University of Memphis, on an invited walk-on scholarship. And my sophomore year, um, met Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Lawler, Jerry the King Lawler. And I went down there specifically to, to try and break into wrestling because getting into wrestling in the 80s was like getting into the mafia. It was, it, it was harder than to get into the mafia. And that's, that's not even a joke. And I started wrestling with Law, Jerry Lawler and was a pro wrestler on and off uh, for 20 years. My biggest stint was on ESPN with the AWA out of Minneapolis. Ganya's group from 88 to 91. Then I promoted for 10 years all over the country. And uh, in between that, ran for United States Congress, uh, ran for Illinois governor. And recently I was on the ballot for Illinois Secretary of State for the Libertarian Party. Been married, happily married for 25 years this October. I have three uh, great children. And yeah, thank you. Three, three children and three grandchildren. And Life is good. Life is good. So, I how did how did you go from from all that your background, you know, wrestling, uh, which I, I still try to keep up every now. You know, if there's nothing else, I'll kind of you know see what's going on. But uh, yeah. it's, it's 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 that guilty habit that you know. Just, yeah, I grew up watching. You know what I mean? Sure, grew, grew up watching yeah. it. Um, but how how did you go from all of that into Talking about the alien interview, which we're going to talk about, and just the yeah. alien phenomena in general, and disclosure, and maybe some other stuff. Uh, but how yeah. did you go from all from your background onto to researching, you know, the paranormal, the alien interview, and all that? Yeah, well, I, I loved I loved uh, TV, and of course, um, what people don't remember because they're not as old as me, but in the seventies, documentary documentaries really started to become in on vogue on TV. Mm -hmm. and, and, and wildlife documentaries, especially and, and whatnot. But, but there's, there became a couple of creepy UFO documentaries that were actually very done very well for the seventies. And that got me hooked to the paranormal and ufology. And then there was a, a documentary about Bigfoot in the seventies. And I just got hooked to all things paranormal and it, always enjoyed it and still to this day enjoy reading about it and researching it and whatnot. But it was in 1997. I'm living downtown Chicago. I'm wrestling part-time all over the country. I'm an automobile wholesaler. I've got this really exciting job of brokering cars between dealers and whatnot. And um, 
again, live in downtown. I'm running for state representative. I'm dating this beautiful blonde who's now been my wife of 25 years. I say that because she can tell the story of this. This happened to my husband. And we were at a, a, an upscale eatery in the downtown of Chicago. And we get to see the uh, the advertisement for this shockumentary on an upstart network called the UPN Network. And it was about an alien interview. And they briefly showed the the alien, which was tan, in round eyes. And I immediately said, wait a minute. I thought it, gray aliens are gray in almond-shaped eyes. I mean, like, immediately I'm like, what the f- is up with that, you know? And I said, pretty smart for a hoaxer to give a different color, different shape of the eyes. And so it came on like about a week later, and I sat in my living room in my condo in Chicago. And Michael, I just be very honest with you, I was awestruck. I was awestruck because it, even though it was darkened, now we, we now know that that's not how the VHS tape came to the production company. We will get into that. But even though it was darkened, it just the movement in the face, and I could make out some eye skin going up and down. And when that mouth opened and closed instantaneously, even though it was shot far back on, on my TV and then black foam started to drip out. And then the doctors come in in short sleeve scrubs and not pressurized suits, you know, to really hype up the story. And then the testimony of Victor still to this day, the most intelligent person I've ever heard speak in my life. And that's saying a lot because I've met and encountered a lot of people, intelligent people, politicians, businessmen, multi, multi-millionaires, you name it. And when it ended, I said, like I still to this day, I don't know what I just saw. Again, folks, remember, I am not here to tell you it's real. Please, you don't have to eviscerate me in the chat log. I am not telling you after five years that I know I know it's real but like I said in 1997 something is detrimentally wrong with this video either it's the worst hoax ever meaning like they put it together in a day or it was this run-of-the-mill interview of an off-planet being or interdimensional being And we saw the casualness of it being the 170th interview of a gray alien. And we saw the casualness of that. Nobody really taking it over seriously by by being in pressurized suits. Two army generals uh, shoulders get in the way of the camera during the clip. Um, You know, just really bizarre stuff that you would not put if you were trying to do a really serious hoax, if I can, if I'm communicating correctly. And then that bizarre monitor where the green blip went up and down on the alien and did not go across like a heart monitor or physiological monitor that we all have seen while our grandparents or somebody was in the hospital or we see on TV. And again, I said to myself, well, why not just cook up a heart monitor to one of the you know, one of the producers or, you know, why are you, again, assuming it's a hoax, why are you building a device and having it go up and down? And I've never seen anything like this device. And it just, it ju- you know, there's one, I'm not smart. I'm not um, scholarly. I, I'm well-read. I'm an amateur historian. I'm wise. I'm well-schooled because of the environment that I've grown up in. But one thing I do have, I am emotionally intelligent. And the back of my hair, metaphorically, for 25 years has been standing up since this documentary telling me, you one day you need to find out about that or pay attention if somebody comes forward about it's a hoax or here's how they did it or it is real. And in 25 years, Michael, no one did. And one day I sat in my car and just said, you know what? I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start a comprehensive investigation to find out the truth of this video. And that's what I did. Were you a little, and that's how I got hooked. Were you a little nervous at first? Like maybe I know you probably aren't now. I know you are, 
if I had to put words in your mouth, but back then, were you a little bit nervous with your friends and colleagues, you know, cause you, you're this, I wouldn't say all American guy, but I guess all, all Canadian, not Canadian. Where, where were you up North? somewhere chicago chicago chicago, chicago. I, I don't know why i thought you said connect canada one time but uh so what did your friends and family think like a lot of my friends and family the ones <laughs> that i know aren't ready to go down the rabbit hole i don't even talk about this shit i don't yeah. tell them i don't tell Smart. them I'm, i've been podcasting since 2010 and i've interviewed right. people you know from from ufos all the way to the deep dark yeah. occult you know satanic yeah. things that go in the, that go bump in the night in this world you know like i don't because you're just gonna be wasting your downtime but anyways like what, what was your 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 process back then was you a little hesitant did you come forward with some friends and family you know H how was that process before we go more into this uh alien interview yeah I, I i wasn't hesitant but i certainly was guarded on who i told what i was doing you know i certainly told my wife but i told my what who who watched this with me 25 years ago, but I also went through the steps of why I am where I'm at. Right. I mean, you know, I, I explained to her, this doesn't make sense. These guys should be in biohazard suits. The two generals are, or are, are, are army personnel in class, A dress uniforms are their shoulders are getting in the way. This is horrible, or this is really run of the mill and the encoding on the bottom of the film, DNI slash 27, you know, I knew enough about video production from being in pro wrestling that that was very expensive to do in the 80s and 90s. It's called digital overlay graphics. And I remember explaining that to my wife, like, I'm like, Joanne, producers in Hollywood are notoriously cheap, which is probably, I said to myself, why they didn't have them in pressurized suits. But to make that alien animatronic doll, which was very good if it wasn't uh, what was fake, that took a lot of money. And so I'm like, these are these things are not, you know, the synapses are not firing together. And then I showed it to a couple of close friends that all knee jerk whistle, like, like whistling past the graveyard. It's dark room and it's an alien head. Well, it must be fake because, you know, has any of us seen a real actual gray alien? No, of course we haven't. So I was guarded. But then once, you know, um, once more people saw me on the internet or heard about it from friends or whatnot, you know, I, I, and I suggest your viewers do this also, if they're interested in the subject, it's the greatest disarming thing you can do at a family party is to say something is not right. And I just want to know the truth. And there's too many people, too many military people, police officers, scientists, whistleblowers. There's too many people coming forward that this phenomenon doesn't have legs of some sort. If it, you know, something is going on, whether it's a, a mass hoax perpetrated by the government, if it's real. And then I always hit people with, well, it's what your Bible said happened. Oh, what are you talking about the Bible? And, you know, Genesis six, something came from the sky. It mated with females and it created a project, a progeny race called the Nephilim. Every culture, every Every culture um, in antiquity for millennia on every continent has the same story. Something came from the sky. It mixed with our society or our tribe. It taught us, it educated us, and it went away. Every single culture. So when you start calmly putting it into those, those um, little boxes and telling people, I'm just trying to find the truth, People understand that and relate to it. And you actually draw a couple of people in um, who open their eyes a little bit and their minds a little bit to, to what is going on, especially when you hit them with the religious part. You know, what's going on is what's happening in the Bible. So why are you laughing at it? You know, so I guess I'll go ahead and pull up this video. Um, actually, this is, was off of one that what you did last year on redacted uh let me go ahead and yeah. see, see if i screen share yep. this boom boom all right something's wrong with the audio so maybe you can narrate like on my well, there's end. no audio in it so that's fine yeah that's that's fine well e even if i like if you were talking like it's something's wrong i gotta i don't know what it is but i have a some crazy stuff going on in here but anyways so tell me i guess you can go ahead walk us through this yeah Okay, according 
to the Defense Intelligence Agency that runs the extraterrestrial interrogation and retention program. This is from a report from a government agency that your taxpayer dollars fund. We are looking at a uh, extraterrestrial entity type one. He is from the Tau Ceti um, uh, star system in the constellation um, uh, Cetus, C-E-T-U-S. He came to this facility south of Area 51, which is called S2 Alpha, in the S2 Alpha Annex, which is near the Bob Lazar famous Papoose Lake. Underneath this facility is the famous S4 level, which is the uh, Alien Housing Containment Center. As you can see that uh, um, this, uh, they call this the other gray because he was tan, bone, peanut butter color with round eyes. And he came to the facility in 1989. Um, interview sessions, uh, they interviewed him about once every six weeks. The interview sessions took place from about one to three hours long. Um, many of the interview sessions did not go very well. As crazy as this sounds, as Da Vinci Code, as this sounds, there were two monks, excuse me, from a monastery in Vermont that somehow caught the attention of the uh, of the uh, D Defense Intelligence Agency. And these monks were brought into this underground facility, uh, especially this ambassador suite, and, tele and communicated uh, telepathically, or as they say, thought projection. The thoughts are actually put right into your brain. You don't actually have to think about it. Uh, communicated with this being very well. The being, um, the, the being is having a respiratory issue here. He had, they think, um, some sort of a, a tuberculosis type condition, some sort of a microbial condition inside its respiratory system. Um, and th there's the two generals that are getting in the way. The green blipping machine, we never found out what it was, although Whitley Stryber claims that he saw this while writing the book Communion. And Whitley Stryber and another Intel informer say that this is the way the beans communicate with human beings. Meaning when the blip starts going up, the bean is trying to communicate something with you. Sorry, I've got up. I've got to. Uh, What's that? Got a, I got a call there. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. But the blip is actually communicating to the telepath that the bean is trying to communicate or relay a message. Um, <clears throat> on the, the, the doctor that's wiping the mouth, we don't have any information on who that is. The doctor with the blue cap to, to our left um, is, uh, I actually communicated with his widow hmm. um, on, a, on the report. I found his name. I looked up who he was. I found his widow. And Victor tells us that the medical staff has chosen more for their ability to keep secrets than their medical knowledge. And when I called his wife, she was very nice. She was about 79, 80 years old. Very difficult conversation, as you can imagine, having to explain that your husband's name came across my desk. I'm a documentarian. Here's what this report says. Please don't laugh at me. Don't hang up. And I said, it's come across my desk that your husband, as a medical doctor, was involved in some sort of um, examination or program that did involve, as crazy as this sounds, and I'm telling this to her, extraterrestrials or aliens. She paused. I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to hang up. She's going to laugh. And I'll never forget this, Michael. She said, John, a light bulb was going off above my head. <laughs> I went, hmm. Excuse, excuse me? She said, and he's got a nickname, but I'm not going to reveal that right now. She said that my husband, there was always a bone, again, I'm using phrases that she actually said to me. There was a bone of contention between my husband and I for the 20 years we were married and the 20 plus years that we knew each other. She said, John, when we would be around our friend group, people, there were men from Korea, World War II, Vietnam. She said everyone had interesting or humorous stories about their time in the military. And my husband never, ever, ever, ever shared one 
story about his time in the U.S. Army Medical Corps. Michael, that was written on the report. I never said that I knew her husband was in the Medical Corps. I just said a doctor in the Army. How did she know that if he wasn't, if that really wasn't the, you know, the t- the branch that he was in? I, I So I sat up in my chair like, I've got the right woman. And she said, you are solving a family secret, a family issue between my husband and I. That was a that was again a problem for 20 years. His friends would ask him, his friends would ask me, I would ask him, we would get into arguments. What did you do in the army as a doctor that you can't tell your wife of 20 years? So listen to Victor, who says they choose medical people for their ability to keep secret more than their medical knowledge. I about fell off the chair. I send her the video. She sends it back to me. Well, Michael, you're younger than me, so you're going to have to just understand what I'm about to say. Go ahead. She goes, John, are you a Honeymooners fan? I said, of course. Uh, Jackie Gleason, the 1950s, the Honeymooners. I'm like, of course. She's like, I, I mean, I'm obsessed with the Honeymooners. So, yeah, I knew that we would watch that all the time when I was a kid. She said, we remember when Ralph finds the, the suitcase of money on, on the bus? I said, of course I do. She said a police officer comes to his door in the, in the beginning of the episode and asks for money. My husband looks exactly like him. And she's if you put a mask over that guy with your mind, that's my husband. And she used his nickname again. And I go find the episode on YouTube. And there's a guy with, a, you know, kind of an angular face with a slightly big nose. And it looks like the guy because we've blown it up and, you know, digitized it. It looks like the, the doctor. To the aliens, right or left. And um, she goes, so I, I don't think you're crazy. That's him. That's my husband. She said, that video is very weird, but this explains everything. That's a direct quote from an 80-year-old woman. She said, you live in Chicago. My daughter lives in the south suburbs of Chicago. I want to give you her name and number if you ever have any more questions. You ever want to meet with her for coffee and ask her about her stepdad? And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, Michael, can you imagine? I'm like this. It's all this it, it's happen. all hitting you at once, though. <laughs> it's all hitting me at once, and I'm like, holy shit! This report that a, that a leaker gave me, and we skipped over that, and I'm sorry. Um, you know, it, it must have some factuality because I've nailed the doctor already. I know, and it's funny when you talk about Bob Lazar and that other biologist, Dan Beerish, not having any information about them on the internet, their educational records being wiped off. This guy has no information about him on the internet. A d- medical doctor who died in his late seventies has nothing on him in the internet other than his obituary. Not that he hit a hole in one at the country club or he gave away his daughter at a wedding. I mean, his graduation for nothing, getting a medical degree, nothing. You know, it's called they call it intelligence community being sheep tipped. They wipe away mm-hmm. your 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 life basically. And I saw this firsthand. Now, I didn't ask his wife about that, but I'm not an idiot. I can go on the internet. I mean, you put in any doctor, it's 20 pages of everything they've done. Or, right. You know, so for a medical doctor to only have his obituary, and, and I and I did get his birth records because I have that program, but that's it. Nothing in between. I uh, It was astounding. So, um, you know, so I had to say to myself, Okay, let's take a little break here. Why is there an actual medical doctor who was in the army in that video? I throw it back to your viewers. I'm not saying it's real. You, I've told you my story. You tell me your story. Why there's, excuse me, there's an actual medical doctor in that video. I can't come up with a reason other than they faked it, you know, or they reenacted a alien interview, or you're looking at an alien interview. What was it that, what do you think is the, the aha moment within that, within that video and, or, and, or what, is that the aha moment that you would take, have like a congressional hearing to, to court, to, right. To, yes. Yeah. To, to try to prove, yeah. to try to prove your case. Well, yeah. what, what was that? What's that moment? There, there, there were two video? of them. When that being, and here I'm going to push my microphone forward. I'll, I'll that, go and try to pull it back. Animatron- yeah, that animatronic puppet, and we've getting we've gotten all 
Well, I'm going to show you what the movie makes. That's why I wanted you to like. You folk, I was I was pushing my microphone back so I don't. Okay. Need it. Okay. Go ahead. So if you wanted to put the camera back on me. Yep. Go ahead. When the bean the bean does this and goes up and forward, and and it his so his body lifts up, his head turns, he cocks his neck forward, and we had FX people, especially one very important FX person that was on the original documentary that said it looks like it could be a hoax, but there's a couple of movements, quote, that I don't understand how they did that. Well, if you, a special effects guru in Hollywood, don't understand how a cheap video production company did moves on an animatronic doll, isn't that game set? I'm not saying it's real. But isn't that game set and match? Like that's like asking, um, you know, uh, uh, AJ Foyt, uh, something about race car driving, and he tells you, I, I don't know how that guy won. I, I mean, well, don't you know everything about race car driving? Right. So that was an aha moment. And the next one was when the mouth opened, seamless, seamless, seamlessly, open, close, open, close, fluid pouring out, open and close. You don't see any wire cables around it. You don't see it's like the it's a small world or the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in the 1960s at Disney World with the bad animatronics. And and no one sees that because no one's really zoomed it in and whatnot. And we saw the original VHS tape that Victor the Whistleblower produced. It was a bluish hue. It was not dark. This was darkened by the production company. So people think, oh, they darkened it to hide the puppet. No, it was actually bluish hue. You could see the full body, the thorax of the alien in full view. And no one was really trying to conceal anything other than the hands were dro drooped down because the being, we were told, was very ill at the time and, and was very weak. Um, but when I saw that mouth zoomed in and, and and we all in my investigation team, we all looked at it like, holy shit. I've never seen that on a, on a animatronic puppet in the, in the eighties or nineties. Um, and remember, this is one continuous three minute shot. There are no cuts. You don't see any animatronic person in the back of the, the bean because the bean does turn his head like this. Um, and, and another thing, one more thing, which we will show hopefully in the documentary. And again, tell me why you would do this as a puppeteer comp production. The in the foreshadow is an army personnel to our right, the beans left. The army personnel moves slightly, Michael, please listen to me, moves slightly to the left of the bean. The Bean, watching this man, not looking down at a video monitor, watching this man, moves its head very slightly to keep him center, his his body center of the alien's view. Why? Who is not, if you have your hand stuck up this head of the Bean, and you're looking at the monitor, which is looking at the Bean, how do you know that that army person Move to the left so you can move your head to the right. I mean, come so, on. So, and so, why would you do that? Why? So, what, I mean, why would you put that in? So, you what know? you're saying is there's some form of intelligence there. Absolutely. And absolutely. And that, it, that guy, that bean had a, a fixed lock position on those two military people in front of him. Yes. Good, good point. So, my thing is with this video. I think why a lot of people, some people, first off, what are some of your biggest critics have to say? Second, 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 that that's, that's part one. And, and secondly, yep. is it too good to be true? So it must be fake. That's right. So, you know, we, we've never seen an alien before. So the critics say it's dark and well, we challenge that right out of the bat. It wasn't dark and we show the bluish hue video DHS tape in its original format. Number two, why would you dress up, hire, pay, feed, and put wardrobe on two, arm, two men to dress up like army people and never put them in the shot, only their shoulders? And why would you let that shot be shown to the public with army, with people getting their shoulders involved? Um, that, um, you know, other people say, well, it, it just has to be a, a, an animatronic doll, the way it moves. Well, how do you know what? how a gray alien moves. First of all, it's not used to this atmosphere. And we've had experiencers tell us that is how a gray being moves. 
They're very stilted and very mechanical at times. They waddle at times when they walk. So who is some guy from Parsippany, New Jersey, going to know what a, a, how a bee alien, you know, should should act and, and should be in and and the fx people they just skip they just they just they don't want to recreate it they all they have these massive egos they keep telling us oh it's a puppet it's a puppet and then they see something and like well and then we've had people well some guy's got his hand up the head and then there's five other people with animatronic remote controlled cables in back of the camera controlling it and and you don't see any movements other than the mouth but you see a little eyebrow skin raised ever so slightly why would you pay to put remote controlled wires there and then move it millimeters so 30 years later we catch it and not we don't catch it and in the digital overlay graphic that dni 27 which is the bombshell by the way emblazoned on the bottom of that film took thousands of dollars in man hours to do as a guy in who was in video production in the 80s told me, John, no one did digital overlay graphics. It was too time consuming and it cost too much. Listen to me. The only people in the 80s and early 90s that did, did, did digital overlay graphics was news programs, network TV, and the government. So why? is a second tier video production company on a shoestring budget, well, obviously, with an upstart up network called the UPN network. Why are they spending money to emblazon DNI, Department of Navy Intelligence, which does not exist? Still to this day, you can't find that it exists. We've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's real. So, and how did they know it was real to put it on there? And then the number 27, which we have proved and found out the bombshell, which is the security level Yankee white. And that's the security level you need to go down into these, uh, un, into these underground facilities for any, anything related to extraterrestrials, Yankee white. And that is having contact with the president of the United States. And we have a list of people in that room. And one of them was Colin Powell's uh, chief of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And we have him in the Oval Office briefing George uh, uh, George uh, H. Bush in the 90s. Um, and that's why you see number 27. It's a security designation. If you don't have the Yankee white clearance, you'd have to get out of that room and not watch that film being replayed back. We've proven everything. We've proven at least what everything is and why it's on there. Nothing makes sense. How can a screenwriter in California in the 90s know that this what the security designation is or security level is for Project Aquarius? I mean, come on, folks. You, I mean, you, you, this is, you know, this is stupid. It's, it's so elementary. Now, am I saying that it's real? No. No, I'm not. But it's either it's filmed by the government. You can you can bet your bottom dollar on that. Whether they recreated it as a disinfo or a optel program to start to desensitize us, or whether it is a real alien, it was filmed by the government. Pick one or the other. And have you looked into the other so-called alien interview? The one, uh, yeah, the one that's yeah, that's 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 CGI and you know, it, it, it definitely somebody. very interesting. It definitely yeah, looks. Not real. You can tell it's a lot better production um right and i'm trying to let these ads go but uh yeah, just the, so VHS, can... the vhs quality ask of this tape is like wait a minute well you put all the fake alien cgis up and then you put this one up you're like what the hell am i at? you know what am i looking at yeah and this one this is the one that you that 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 you thought that that you were talking about right this one the well, yeah you look at that one and yeah. then you look at mine and it's like Holy! I mean, mine looks like it's filmed on you know sixteen millimeter. This looks like CGI. Uh huh. And then there's a lot of people out there. See, do you think? I forgot the name who said he came forward, or somebody I forgot the name of who supposedly created this video. But do you think that maybe this was released to possibly, and this is just a maybe, you know, to that was released to maybe discredit the your alien interview 
um, and other possibly whistleblowers that come forward. It's just more of a, I guess a, I, I guess counterintelligence a, program. Yes, yeah. yes, a counterintelligence yes. program to discredit anybody else that comes forward yeah. now and in I, the future. You know, I hope your vote viewers appreciate my honesty. I don't know that, but I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I have been target number one in the uh, in the intelligence agency network for for two years, and I don't say that to pat myself on the back or. You think they really care about Lou Elizondo? They don't. They know what he has and what he can't show. Um, I am, I am, according to many intelligence people, I am sitting right now on the peak of what has this guy got? What is he going to do? And how do we stifle him to some degree? Is it because you're and a loose you cannon? Other- is it because you're a loose cannon and you're not bought and paid for? I, I think my the fact that I am a loose cannon has kept me stay has kept me alive. Do you fear do you fear for your death though? No. Or or maybe had some some threats possibly? No. Um I've had someone tell me my life is in danger, but that that is about it. What what has happened was a complete documented folks documented electronic incursion on my life and especially my iPhone to the point where I I've, I've had have Apple Corporation do forensic audits. I made a report with the FBI. I made a report with the NSA, the DIA, Pentagon, um, about the electronic cons- incursion on my phone and the, the, the emails that have gone missing on two separate occasions, amongst a lot of other stuff. I've had a blurry text screen where the the last text message is the only thing that is shown about uh, below the blurriness that the Apple Corporation said they have never seen that before. And I heard that over the text shoulder by the director of that of the branch that was doing my forensic audit and it I, it is i had a, a intelligence person tell me that i have been the victim of a counterintelligence program called stingray centipede which is brought out by the nsa they have to get a court order it's not used a lot for drug dealers or you know cia uh, you know for like uh spy programs or whatever it's more of a counter intel thing like Let's see what's on his phone. Let's see what he's doing. And 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 it's a it's a counterintelligence program for what I've been told, but it's called Stingray Centipede. And I was specifically emailed that I just wanted hey, Mr. Stewart, I just want to let you know what's going what I think is going on with your phone. Here's what the the the, the uh spyware is called. Here's who does it or who is doing it, so on and so forth. I met a two CIA agents that own a microbrewery. That's not a joke. Um the retired and the woman who was in linguistics for the CIA took me underneath the arm and walked me outside. And she said, look, I just want to tell you something. You seem like a nice guy. You're barking up the wrong tree asking the Pentagon or the DIA who stole your emails. She goes, I can tell you the only agency that would do that is the NSA. So I, I sued him and um, just to, to get to see, you know, a freedom of information request, of have I been a target? And they sent me back this rambling letter and then I appealed it and my electronic, you know, incursion started going a hundred, a thousand percent. Um, just being unable to do so, so many things on my phone, my emails being swiped again, which may maybe go to my local police and file a report and the FBI. So folks, I'm not just making this up to hype my future documentary. Um, it, that has been how. And that and that is 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 made me mad. But I understand, I guess, when you stick your neck above the crowd and you have success and I have so many in, former intelligence people that have been helping me that it, that it's obviously pissing someone off in the intelligence community. And I understand that. And I think also the fact that I don't rally against the government. I speak highly of our government. I speak highly of the military. Um, I think that calms a lot of people down if they're pounding the desk and, you know, the beltway of, you know, we got to stop this guy or, or whatnot. And, and the last thing, Michael, I didn't steal this tape. I didn't let it out to the public. You, the government let it out and did nothing. So what are you mad at me for? You know? Yeah. And I was military for six years, military police. And, you know, I'm very patriotic and a lot of people, you know, over the years, especially, you know, since podcasts and since 2010, you right. know, cause I'm very patriotic 
And, you know, because I don't just cover the paranormal, the strange, ancient mysteries. I cover a lot of conspiracies also. Um, and some things are like, that's unpatriotic. How dare you, you know, discuss such and such, whatever, 9-11, whatever it is. No, I sign an oath, you know, all enemies, foreign, and of course, domestic. And I think that's our biggest threat here. Rather, you want to talk about conspiracies or, but it all, to me, it kind of, it's all one big spider's web, man. You could, with, with the UFO phenomena, the alien topic with the conspiracies also, it's all one big web. And who are these players? That's who I want to know. Who are these players? Who are, we call them the elites, the Illuminati or whatever, that's keeping this information from getting out. But I want to know who those fucking players are that's keeping this information from us. National security. Oh my God. I get tired of hearing that. It's, of course, I don't understand some things, but the reason course, why you have so many so conspiracy theorists out there is because you're not, you're not showing, emitting full transparency. You're keeping correct. everything hidden behind a veil. And then you're trying right. to label us conspiracy theorists because of what you started. You're keeping everything hidden behind a veil and you're not releasing all this information. You know, why are, I guess expand on that. Who, who, who do well, you it's think mocking our citizenship are? when you when you operate a government by concealment rather than transparency, when you operate a government with opaqueness uh, rather than uh, a free, open uh, highway of information. You you mock our citizenship and you and you and you um, you throw away our loyalty. And I won't stand for that. Um, I ran for president of the United States in February for the Libertarian nomination. I came in second in Iowa in the straw poll. And I don't say that to impress anybody. I say to impress upon people that in the month that I was running, I simply told people about this phenomenon. And I simply said, I have a fundamental problem that the duly elected president of the United States cannot, cannot knock or is not able to knock on any door of any government facility that is owned by taxpayer dollars in the United States. I have a fundamental problem with that. And in this secrecy of sidestepping the president and sidestepping Congress and the general accounting office, I'm sorry. I signed an oath too when I ran for Congress and I still abide by it. That is wrong. And 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 we have people telling that we might have spent three to seven trillion dollars hiding these programs from the world when that money could have been spent on underprivileged people and underserved community. I, I just have a fundamental problem with that. It's wrong. It's ridiculous. I understand the need to hide the tech. I really do. But to tell us, to not tell us the basic premise that we, uh, that extraterrestrial life, like you've read in your Bible, that something from the heavens have come down on this planet, they're still coming down, and that's just a fact of life. To not be upfront with the American people is, is, is abhorrently criminal. I understand certain tech, you know, um, but I'm a firm believer, man. I, Cancer, man, we already had the cures. You know what I mean? That that kind of shit needs to be released. Um, I put everything on the on the table that we have a cure for cancer. But back to we can't handle the truth. That's the reason why we're you know we're we're keeping it we're keeping you safe. How about you let me make up my own mind? Rather, I can right. let me handle my own safety. Right. That's one thing I can't stand about the censorship because you see these yep. little pop up things that for your sake bullshit. But uh, yep. so with that being said, um, I lost my train of thought where I was going to go with that. But um, it so what they need to do they need to release all this because, like I said, that we can't handle the truth as far as safety or security and all that bullshit. So. If that's the case, you know, you're making a prejudgment on the rest of the population. See, I want to have that trial by fire moment. You know what I mean? Like I can tell my daughter every, any day, every day that what to do and not to do, you know, she's right about to be two years old, a couple months. I can tell her what to do and not to do, but she really will not learn. If she ke keeps disobeying, she really will not learn until she has that trial by fire moment and touches the hot stove or a light socket. Hopefully that doesn't happen, right. but she will learn and she will right. grow from that. 
you know, just every little thing, every little thing like that, you will, that's, that's my thing. Let's say this, this tech, this, this Vela secrecy that's been on, you know, on us for all these years, let us just throw that fire at us and let us just, we'll get over it. What if, if it's too scary to whatever, if we're be, if we have shapeshifters within the government, let us know, we'll deal with it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, 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 that's one I, I can't stand is the lack of transparency. I know what I just, we just talked about it, but that's the thing I can't stand is <laughs> lack of transparency and trying to keep everything hidden behind national security. You know, I understand a few things, you know, but to label everything as your, your, your over embracing umbrella to label everything right. as national security, right. I, I call bullshit. Yeah, and I do believe that they are starting to cut, that they that there was is a plan and was a plan that was implemented. It started in 2017 with the Tic Tac video. Um, I I I have heard many many intelligence people tell me there's this bloodless civil war. Half of the people want disclosure in the military, half don't. So you saw the Lou Elizondo, you know, 2017, and I think that it's a 10 year plan. And in 2027, um. You know, you, you might see on TV to some degree, um, as strange as that is, some sort of life form, some sort of being, uh, maybe a craft, maybe, a, you know, cameras out at some military base and just, you know, peel it off like a Band-Aid. And, you know, um, I don't think people are going to run in the streets anymore. I think we're too obsessed with our cars, our phones and real housewives of Orange County. And that's it. I mean, we don't. I don't think people care anymore. I really, I really don't. I think it'll be a, you know, it'll be on the news for a week, like 9-11, but, you know, um, eventually we'll go on. People know this is real. The majority of people know the government knows something and, and a, uh, a smaller majority, but certainly more than half of Americans believe the government knows a tremendous amount about extraterrestrial life, uh, their craft, their intentions, and their capabilities. And we're about to get more into your uh, alien interview and future plans. And I have a few questions about that also about that, about the interview. Um, but I saw where you posted on your Twitter or your ex, I think it was August 14th. You said, quote, let's see. And you reply to a, a repost that you did from concerned citizen quote, let's see. I told you five hours ago, a nine 11, type scenario will happen soon to wipe out to wipe our memories of aliens and ufos lo and behold Correct. my prediction becomes prophecy expand a little bit more on that john well i believe i believe the um the event that's going to um um i'm gonna choose the right word here the the event and i've been warned to not talk about an upcoming event but i'm just it's already been it's already out there so but I think the event that is going to um, very conveniently um, bring down the global economy for a reset and um, be so jaw-dropping that an extraterrestrial in a tube in formaldehyde at an army base is going to be kids play is, I, I believe, the monkeypox virus. I believe that virus is the one that um, is going to bring it all down. That's my opinion. And I believe in that so much that I, well, I won't say that, but I believe, I believe that that, that is something that, uh, that has the chance of, of really doing a, uh, a, 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 a detrimental effect on us and a double whammy of some sort of a plate tectonic earthquake or, you know, a so solar activity. We are so high tech and high, high advanced, Michael, but that doesn't mean that we're impenetrable. The more high tech you become, the more vulnerable at times you are. are, are. And, um, you know, we are one mass solar ejection away from a total grid collapse. So um, I believe conveniently this is going to help the government because we'll never be able to pay off the debt. I think it's now 70, $72 trillion a lot. if you had the implied responsibilities of the United States government. We're $72 trillion in debt. I think there's $120 uh, trillion in um, 
uh, bonds that are still on the open market, if I could be wrong about that. And the global economy is something like $500 trillion in debt. I mean, it's unsustainable. It's, you know, and I think that's why you see Bitcoin, you know, because that's going to be, you know, the digital currency that reads it in our Bible that someone is going to have the ability to say whether you can buy and sell goods on a given day. That's in your Bible. That's not me telling you this, folks. That's in your Bible. And you can see now, you couldn't see it 2,000, 3,000 years ago when that was written. But you can see now how one person will soon have the ability to decide whether you can go out and buy a, a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread on a given day with digital currency. If that's I, the only currency. I do think that they have big things planned. Um, but I think they're going before they throw whatever it is, whether it be natural or not natural, um, toward our way. But I think they're going to wait till after the elections. I don't. Oh think, yeah, I don't mean that this is going to happen in weeks. Yes, well, I agree. Because I don't think they want whoever they want to be as right. president. Right. They're not. They don't want to bombard them right. with bad publicity. Uh, right. They can't handle this shit. I think that whoever you know, probably if Trump gets in, that's probably when they'll throw everything that, down the pipe, you know? Right. As Victor said about the presidency, and you talk about the alien being a puppet, there is a puppet if, in the, every sense of the words, mm -hmm. you know, um, from what I've known for the past 30 years of my involvement in politics. I don't trust any of them, man. Like, no. But yes, no. You, basically all you do is you just, you pick the lesser of two evils. Um, because just that my let's say if you're just an employee at walmart this is just a walmart we're not talking about the washington dc mainstream politics um right. you can't get to the top be a regional manager or the big wig at walmart just like a or whatever without doing one one or two things or all of them lying cheating stealing backstabbing manipulating you can't do it imagine politics much bigger arena you right. you can't do it by being a noble person by being yeah and you can't and you can't do it without any money and to get money you've got to take big money from big donors and they want something in return how right. do I know this I ran for Congress twice you know I ran for governor you don't think I know about corruption of money in politics are you kidding me I'm going to take that hundred thousand dollar pack donation from the guy that's got this seventy foot boat on Lake Michigan and he's a uh, you know, he owns 30 companies in Chicago. You don't think that guy's going to not want something from me when I become your next congressman? Please. He's You're gonna a fool if you think that. He's going to try to blackmail you that. first. He's going to try to blackmail you first, yeah. Of course. So let's take a quick That's little... one of the reasons why that's so funny you said this, and I've never said this on camera ever to anyone. There is, my wife and I are extremely nice people socially. We really are. And I'm not bragging. But everyone in Democratic and Republican politics in Illinois love my wife and I, and, and say nothing but good things. I'm not bragging. Let me finish. I think because they know, my wife and I know all the secrets. We've been to all the parties. We've been to the cocktail parties. We've been in the back rooms. We've seen the deals. You know, Secret you're not going to do anything to piss off me and my wife. I'll destroy you. Not that I would, but I could. And so you're, I'm just making a point without trying to name drop or brag or that, yeah, I, my wife and I have seen it all. I've seen it all. And I'm talking about with someone that became president from the Chicago area. So, you know, um, you, you, you know, there, there are so many ways to, to influence or corrupt a politician. And money is not the only way. Blackmail or, you know, um, out of office future jobs. You know, we see that with generals and, and contract, military contractors. Mm. It's like a revolving door. I don't necessarily agree with that, you know. So, um, you know, hey, John, I'll give you all this money. You'll become a congressman for 15, 8, 16 years. You'll retire with a pension, and then you'll have a job in my corporation as vice president. And in the 16 years, you've, you've you know, you've made us 20, 30, 40 million dollars in, in all of the laws. And if you do what we tell you, for. if we if you do what we tell you, you may become a hundred hundred million dollars richer. That's exactly know? right. That's exactly so, right. So so I'm sure you said it a while ago. 
but you were throwing a lot of information out there in the beginning about the alien interview and all that. What, um, uh, what year was this and who released it? Okay. In 1996, uh, a small video production company in Beverly Hills called rocket pictures gets a call from a man said he worked for the government and he smuggled out a three minute VHS tape of an extraterrestrial being interrogated in an underground facility just south of Area 51. He had previously went to Fox Network. They threw him out of the office because he was hard, difficult to deal with, a little weird, and they could not guarantee his security, meaning they wanted to use his name and social security number and write him a check. And so he calls Rocket Pictures that at the time was doing a, a Chevy Chase, like Caddyshack golf comedy VHS tape. And he called them up and they said, yeah, sure, come on in. Let's see the tape like anybody else, would. you know, any small company. They watched the tape. They were astounded. Victor left in a ca taxi cab. And they got like four or five ufologists that the director knew of to all came in and watch this tape. And they were all kind of like, Jesus, this is really bizarre. This is not an obvious hoax. They brought Victor back. They agreed to money terms, to questions, because they he didn't initially want to be on the, the production. But they said, we have to interview you. And they interview him. They put it together. They sell it to the Upstart UPN Network on a program called Strange Universe as a one-hour special on this program, weekly episodic program. And in May of 1997, the world sees the alien interview. Um, And I remember when you said, I wrote down, he had tuberculosis or something like that. And, well, and they, you, you know what I was yeah. thinking? I was thinking War of the Worlds. You know, it's almost like they can't handle our illnesses or diseases or whatever. You know, that's kind of yeah. what I was thinking, but. Yeah, well, Victor says that they have they re they eliminated microbial life in the respiratory system. However, being in the Earth's atmosphere, colonies can form in the respiratory system. Now, I'm not saying that that was what was wrong with this, but um, but from when I uh, uh, when I got the report and Googled what MCR is, or I'm I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Um, it was a some sort of uh, some a tuberculosis like respiratory illness, but they're not even sure that that is exactly what it had, if that makes sense. Because you're looking at cells from a potential automaton, cyborg, you know, biological entity, not a human being. Um, so I, I would assume that getting a really a fix, and I say that in military terms, a fix on what the what the correct disease was that this being suffered and, and died from um, is still up in the air, according to the report. Is that S2 alpha site that's that's near uh, S4? Is that still up and running? Uh, S2 alpha is above S4. S4 is a level under S2 alpha annex building. S4 it, is the level. Now, there is a site four, but that's north of Papoose Lake in west of Area 51. There is a site four. But the with the S four that Victor Lazar, um, Jason Sands talks about, Dan Burris talks about, that is under the S two annex building. The S two annex building is like the above ground administration building where you check in, you switch badges, and then you go down to the various levels. And there are five different levels. There's a sub level under S four, then S three, S two, and then of course the uh, the top S two building annex, S two annex. When is and that you, was built in 1961 uh, by the Defense Intelligence Agency, and we have the FOIA request for that. So we know the building, a, a building is there that Burrish, Victor, Bob Lazar talk about. We do have proof from satellite and FOIA request, because we do our homework, that it is there. When is your new documentary going to be released? Or do you have, do you have a, a somewhat of a, a date that it will, will be yeah. released? We um we I failed we failed to sell this to like Hulu and and um and and uh, Discover, so we are going to put it out in an online streaming one night pay per view online. It's the easiest way, and it's believe me, it's not easy, but it's the only way I can do this now. I have to get this out of my life. I have to tell everybody who Victor is and move on with my life, plain and simple. Am I saying that? Netflix won't, you know, give us money to make a full-blown documentary like you see on, you know, um, I don't know, possible. 
And then I will, I will write the book about my experience, which is jaw dropping. And, um, I'll be out of this, this community and, uh, I'm going on with my life. You mentioned, I think it was on the redacted interview, I believe. I don't know. Um, about saber synthetic. Yes. Extra biological. Yes. Extraterrestrial races. Expand a little bit on that, John. Uh, and yeah, this that's, is, that's, that's a damn mouthful, man. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to sound like sour grapes and stuff, but, and I, and I hope the viewers that understand this appreciate this. I realize I'm not the easiest guy to absorb. I'm hyperbolic. I'm loud. Um, you know, a former wrestler, My kind of guy, though, man. politician, <laughs> you know, I understand, but there is a real vitriol in the UFO community of hatred towards me not so much me personally but the fact that i've had success with my investigation and people don't either two things they don't want me to succeed anymore or they don't want me to succeed so the 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 hunt the story goes away and i've had this experience in jack with jack the ripper ripperologist who studied jack the ripper they don't want to find out who jack the ripper is because it takes away the hunt. It takes away the next week cliffhanger. It takes away the tourism industry in, in Whitechapel of the Jack the Ripper tours. I get that. And I think that's the same with the UFO. You know, I tell people, once you find out that extraterrestrials are real and your government tells you, and I'm being very serious, do you have a plan for your life, life after disclosure? Because what are you going to do? You spent 20 years studying this and being wrapped up in this and missing your children's lives and family parties and going out and, you know, um, you know, having fun with your friends and family. Are you ready for when it's, there is no more mystery. There is no more hunt. It's a foregone conclusion. I, I gent gently like to ask people, your viewers, what are your plans for after disclosure? Cause it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks and there'll be a depression phase. I went through a depression for about a week and a half when I found Victor's identity and talked to him on the phone, it was 30 years of looking for this guy, finally finding him 1000% proving it's Victor. And then like the letdown. And I had a lot of police officers like, like console me or like help me talk to me that this is very typical with investigations. You find the serial killer and now there's no more hunt and there is a depression, you know, the Christmas is over type depression. And so I went through the same thing. So I'm not talking from the, uh, from the ivory tower. I'm just telling people when, when disclosure happens, be prepared for your life after disclosure. Sorry, I've got to send this to Weissman. But, so, but man, at, after you get this out, your book, the documentary, whatever, yeah, man, yeah. You, like you said, you're loud and outspoken. There's so many different rabbit holes you can go down. Rather be with the paranormal, the UFO alien phenomena, or other yeah. other deep conspiracies that could be related or somewhat not yeah. related. You know, there's so many other you know, avenues. Yeah, you know, Michael, I'm 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 interested in like um like very just amateur treasure hunting or just you know doing like helping out an archaeological dig, something like that, something low key, and you know. Um, I think I would be interested in that. I've been watching a lot of that stuff on YouTube lately. And, you know, the New Mexico and Utah has a lot of Spanish would be potential treasure sites. And that, that interests me, but, you know, without getting wrapped up and, and, um, and, and totally down that rabbit hole, I, you know, I'm 57, you know, my wife's been, you know, married to a pro wrestler, car dealer, politician, alien hunter. I think she deserves, you know, uh, to have normal John back for a, for a while. I think your viewers would agree. Right. Um, and earlier, I don't want to cut you off. No. Whenever you're talking about the the doctor with, it looks kind of green on the video, but it's bluish, whatever. Yes. Um, do you think, I know he was up in eight, like 70 something years old that you said, do you think that he was taken out maybe, or, or did he really die of like natural causes? No, he died of natural causes, but his bio has totally been scrubbed. That's crazy, man. Crazy. And the wife said he never, ever, ever spoke about his time in the Army Medical Corps, and we never could figure out why. And you are solving a family secret that is verbatim said to me by the widow of the man to the alien's right, our left, the doctor. Put it in the bank. Game, set, 
match. And again, I ask your viewers, don't write nasty shit on the chat room. I'm asking you, I still don't know it's real. I can't tell you it's real, folks. I'm asking you, why is a credentialed medical doctor in a fake video hoaxed by a video production company out of Beverly Hills? Why? Why? I think they got to him. They got to him. What happened? Um, you know, it's possible how the game works, you know, that is threat. But if he didn't talk to his wife, he might not be probably didn't talk to anybody else. So maybe he, she never said that he was murdered or was suspicious. He did die in his early 80s, she said. What I mean, they got to him is they probably made threats, you know, we'll kill your family. Oh, there's we'll no doubt about it. I, Michael, I've talked to five people that have been at S4 or in that facility. They, they monitor your phone calls, they monitor your mail, they talk to people that your friends. Oh, you're monitored until you're out of the program. And even when you're out of the program, you are you have some sort of a tail on you. The S4 telepath told me that. Bob Lazar told me that. Uh, Victor has mentioned that. And so has Dan Burish. Absolutely. You are by no means free once you quit that program. That's a great point. Thank once you for making that. Once you're in the club, you can't leave the club. You can't leave the club. <laughs> um. I don't think you mentioned it earlier, but I think I do remember it was all for it. Oh, Sabre. We forgot about Sabre. Oh, yes. Sabre. There you go. Elaborate so, a little bit on that because I, I'm yeah. sure people so, will find that so, interesting. So, about, so when I came forward with allegedly the new designation by the government of extraterrestrials, I'm like, this is going to put me on top of the UFO map. You know, I mean, when you come out with information no one's ever heard of, you know, I'm so I was so proud of our investigation with this person from the National Air and Space Intelligence Center at Wright Pad. We interviewed him three times. I got this new designation of extraterrestrials. I was so happy for the UFO community. And it like it like vanished like a fart in the wind. And I only have to think to say is people don't want to see me succeed. And I guess I have to live with that. But an agent at the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, uh, Wright Pat, which is you know was his headquarters of ufology since the 40s, in its foreign material division in the blue room uh, at, at Wright Pat said that the new designation of extraterrestrials by the people in these programs and the military people that are in these programs is saber like the sword synthetic astrobiological extraterrestrial races. They are part, part um, biological um, being and part machine synthetic saber. Synthetic astrobiological extraterrestrial races. So I am really proud that we got that out. S A B E R. That's yeah. correct. Um, yep. Do you think that? Do you think that? What's your hopes? You know, we got about fifteen minutes <clears> left. <throat> well, what's your hopes for? I know you want all this to be released, and you want the government to, you know, to tell the truth if they ever will tell the truth. But whenever you're said none, what is your, what's your underlying hopes? Like maybe your subconscious or conscious, what do you wish to happen? Not just with maybe just yeah. the alien interview, but maybe the phenomena in general. Yeah. Let me, let me pontificate and, and go into a stream of consciousness, if you will. Go ahead, and man. I ask your viewers, I ask your viewers to bear with me. I would love, I still see, I have a vision of myself when this is all done on the CBS Sunday morning show, you know, that very educated highbrow news program on Sunday mornings and bear with, listen to me, just bear with me here, folks. And the, the crux of the story is you can do something too. You can accomplish something too. Here is this 57 year old grandfather, not very bright. And I'm not, no knowledge of the UFO phenomenon, knew nobody in the military or covert agents, and he's trying to break into the most high-tech government facility ever built, known to man, above even Fort Knox. And he's trying to do it 30 years in the past. And if this bald George Costanza can do that, then you could, you can too, no matter what it is, because I want to see people happy in their lives. I want to see people don't ever give up. Um, it's never too late, that type of message. So that is my personal belief or personal wish. And I hope that at some point 
a bipartisan body is formed to have a massive congressional hearing on all of this. We're fortunately and unfortunately, we will have to give dispensation to military people, to subcontractors who have spent hordes of money, who have possibly murdered people, who have lied to oversight committees, lied to the American people, a, a dispensation like they did in South Africa when Mandela took back over, wipe the books clean, tell the American people in the world, yes, we have these craft, yes, we have these beings, they're malevolent, they're, they're benevolent, you know, we don't think that there's any harm, but we do have contingencies in place in case something does go out of control. We are sorry we did this, but we were so far down the rabbit hole, we didn't know how to come clean. And, and we move on. We move on with the rhetoric of Republican versus Democrat and the 24-hour news cycle. And everyone's got this tribal warfare and Reddit and Twitter and YouTube and screw you. And yeah, your mother's ugly. And I mean, is this what America's about? I, I, I think there's got to be a bigger picture. And I think the beans want us to have a bigger picture of life other than going out to dinner with our friends and everyone being on their cell phones, Snapchat. Yeah. And that's, and that's my dream. My, my dream is this to just be out in the open and not the technology, of course, and to keep disseminating the technology for our own benefit into the world, like cure for diseases and energy and, and electronic, electronic um, applications. I don't think I'm asking for a lot, and I don't think the American public's asking for a lot. If I could play, and I know the government can do it. And all I want to do is be one of the people, and I'll end here. All I want to do is be one of those guys, Michael, that helps the government come out of the closet with the alien phenomenon. That's, and I think I've done my part. That's my only thing um, to be the Debbie Downer, man. Just after researching this stuff, not just this, the phenomena, but, you know, conspiracies and things like that, man. Sometimes you go into a dark place, you know, yes. go, going down these rabbit yes. holes. Yes. And, and sometimes you're going down these rabbit holes and you're trying to find light on the, at the end of the tunnel and it just, it veers off in different other rabbit shoots, you know? Right. But when right. it comes down to disclosure, transparency, man, I have no faith in DC. I don't care what political party it is. Know. You know what I mean? And yes, it's a money grab. It's, it's controlling the information grab. It's yeah. controlling. Yep. It's everything. It's all about control, controlling the narr everything, the narrative, everything. Yep. And I just don't have faith in the government at all. It doesn't matter who gets elected. I don't have faith because whatever names you want to call them, man, there are certain factions, deep state, Illuminati, the elites, whatever. There's so many names for these figureheads that, man, they're not going to release all this stuff. You know what I mean? And maybe they're trying to give us like, they're just throwing us a bone every now and then with these yeah, the, the hors d'oeuvre. I call it the hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. With, with, <laughs> so with, they don't come back for the main course with the congressional hearings, like with, yeah. you know, the past couple of years that they've had in DC with, you know, grush and they're just throwing us a damn bone. And, yep. and, and then we're, 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 we're getting all happy and excited and everything that maybe yeah. I'm, I'm optimistic to an extent but after researching not just the phenomena, you see how controlled everything is. That's why people that study and research just alien phenomena and UFOs and all that, they need to branch out into other avenues also. And you'll see how controlled and how fucked up this, this country really is, you know? Yeah. Yep. Do you have any faith that we'll actually get disclosure, though? You know what I mean? Like, of course, I, I of, have, of course, I, I guess have... you have faith. But do you think it will happen, though? I'm not overly optimistic, um, but I think that uh, lightning could strike and there could be a, an alignment of situations where, again, the government gives us a little bit more than our derv. That's about how op as optimistic as I am. I mean, I do think that it's possible that we will see a craft. I don't think you'll see something come out of it. You, we may be shown a video of a live bean or a video of a dead one, I think that's that's possible and it goes away to some degree. And then all of this starts over again. But I do I do believe I don't think you'll see a congressman come out with a live alien if there is one. I do think you'll see a video which will help the app help the palate digest that a video of a of a dead alien or even possibly a live one. 
I can make a prediction for uh, the <clears throat> the the next Olympics. What twenty twenty eight? I guess. Yeah, in Los it, Angeles. Yes, and the last time it was in Los Angeles, um, which I wasn't alive, but last time I was in Los Angeles, they had a UFO descend from the sky and a beam right. came out. So I guarantee right. that they they may do a better reenactment. Maybe. You know. Yeah. Right. With with, right. with with lasers, with high, higher technology, right. and right. there's no telling what kind of symbolism and things that they're trying to, you know, throw yeah. out there then. Um, yes. One la couple questions left uh, about to end this discussion, but I think you said on, and you've been on a couple bit bigger, you know, like redacted. That's huge. Yeah. You know, huge. Uh, but yes, it, it'd be nice to see you get on like, you know, some of the, the. Yeah. I'd like to get on concrete right? Rogan. Yeah. I, I really would. Yeah. Um, yeah, agreed. I think you mentioned on, I guess it's redactor or another one because I, I watched a few of them just preparing some notes for the show. But I think extraterrestrials have been manipulating and influencing influencing human affairs for centuries, possibly even millennia. Um, yes. and totally, I totally agree. You know, I, I think they possibly possibly been here all along, man. You know part of the That's fallen what angels, I believe. you know, yes. um, yep. and maybe yep. they even have ability to show themselves in different masks. You know what I mean? Like, right. Like demons, it's no telling demons, fairies, whatever. But what do you think the motivations behind their involvement is, is here, uh, within, I guess our reality and, and what's their, what do you think their, if there are nefarious plans, what do you think those nefarious plans are? Yeah. I don't think there is a nefarious plan. I think that we are, the animals and they are the fish and game or the wildlife division. And they are the tourists, the thrill seekers, the biologists, the engineers, the environmentalists, you know, we are not on the top of the food chain anymore. So that's number one. And number two, I think they came to this planet, saw that it was rich in minerals and resources that it had a basic life form, um, which I, I think in my opinion, studying this, that which was Homo erectus, and they took Homo erectus and tinkered with it 162 times, according to geneticists, capped off the second chromosome, and um, created man. And that's what it says in the Bible and many other ac accounts and Sumerian texts and whatnot. And, um, you know, I think I do believe that the majority of species coming here that have come here, based on that we are still here, um, you know, treat us like an ant farm. and. Um, Sometimes they might get involved. Sometimes they might take genetic material. Sometimes they might tag us like we do a deer or a bear. Um, sometimes that tagging goes good. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't think they're going to, you know, uh, cry when a human being dies, but certainly they don't, they're not out to cause destruction. And, um, you know, I think that they, they all have different agendas. I really truly believe that. Just like the British going down to the Amazon. In the 1800s, they all had different agendas. One was a geologist, one was a fortune seeker, one was a, you know, a, someone thrill a, a vacation, a thrill seeker. One was for science. One was on behalf of the the British government for 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 minerals and resources. And why why would they be any different? So, um, I think that's those are the the gambit. Why we went to other places 100, 200 years ago is the same reason that they're here. And we use animals, organs for our own well-being, pig heart and pig kidney. And, you know, and, and so why are we so aghast when some something else does that to us? I mean, whatever I'm these very, beings, I'm very pragmatic about this. I really am. I just I know I'm not on top of the food pyramid anymore and I'm OK with it. What are these beings or entities, whatever their agenda or true purpose are rather they come from out there or they've been here all along or whatever. Um, maybe they just look at us like, just, just like you said, you know, like cattle, um, which I'm not saying it's good. You know, maybe some of the bad things that they've done in the Paris or malevolent things they've done, but, right. but just right. like we, we eat steak. I love steak, but I don't right. think about the process it took for, exactly. for me to get that steak on my table. You know what I mean? Great point. Great like, analogy like ranchers they they don't hate or yeah. like no want to just 
wipe out that that's part of their They're actually very nice to the cattle they they treat their hooves they inject them with antibiotics they give them good food and feed i mean yeah and they kill them at the end i mean so i, I you know stop you know people have to put their ego in check and that's the hardest part I'm not and saying. I know that's hard. That's incredible for a pro wrestler to say he doesn't have an ego on this, but I don't. <laughs> I've I've put it in check. You know, I'm not I'm not sitting on top of the food chain. So I guess we'll go and round things off for this time, uh, okay, John. But I guess if if you were on the mic back in your wrestling days, the floor is yours. How do you want to end this discussion? Uh, give me your hot take or, or shoot whatever they called it in the in the business. Um, and the floor is yours, and we'll just we'll end it right here, man. I've never done this like that. Like, <laughs> but I, I would say, you know, we talk about Lou Elizondo and we're talking about Richard Dolan and we're talking about all these people that are coming forward like Jason Sands. Let's talk about the man who's coming forward with what's called actual documents and facts and videos and analysis and whistleblowers. I'm not some government agent telling you stories by that I heard at the campfire when I was in the Army or the Air Force. I brought forward the documents. I throwed it in people's faces. I fought the government. I went up against Hollywood. I went up against the UFO community. And I am standing here five years later, victorious, that I think that I have proven the greatest cover-up and the biggest secret in human history. And I didn't do it with stories. I did it with human intelligence. I did it with documents. I did it with guts and courageousness. And I'm standing here to tell you the truth that the government has had and knows all there is to know about extraterrestrials and life elsewhere. How's that? Man, you hit it on the dime, man. You still got it. <laughs> you did a hell of a job. I, I Thank you, sir. Hell of a job. But, uh, but yeah, John. Um, I'll let you know when everything, you know, and you can share this on, on X and everything, okay. but yeah, dude, this was a treat and honor and privilege. Thank yeah. you very much for coming on beyond forbidden, man. Thank you. Hopefully I can come back weeks before the, uh, pay-per-view and we can plug it and tell everybody anything else that we've learned and, and, uh, we all move forward together. That's all I want. And thank you for having me on and God bless you, your family. God bless all of your viewers. Have a safe, happy rest of our summer and labor day. And we will see all of you in the future. Thank you for having me on.